but don't rely on love and blessings from above. It needs a little help on earth. Marriages are made in heaven, and heaven knows their worth. But never just decide that heaven will provide. Give a little help on earth. Sometimes the road is hard and Seems so far away. Marriages are made in heaven, but each must help his own. Just learn to give and take, and then one day you'll make a heaven just like Dobby and In our village, we carry on a tradition established in the reign of Henry VI. Each year, before a judge and jury, a public trial is held of any couple who can prove that they have passed a year of unmarred married bliss. To the successful claimants, the court awards a flitch of bacon. We Honeycrofts are something of an authority on this ancient custom and have always seen it through without a hitch until last year when the Tophams took a hand. Jester! Jester, come in! Jester, you silly dog! Jester! Here's the boy. Phew! Morning, Mother. Good morning, dear. Morning, Father. Morning. Got your war paint on again, I see. What is it this time? I've been nominated for the Flitch Committee. And you better watch out. The vicar's sister wants your blood. Oh, not again. I gave a pint last week. No, 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 darling. I mean, she's getting beady-eyed about you. You know, the green-eyed monster. After all, we are foreigners, you know. Only lived here 15 years, remember? Truce talks collapse. Generals fly back to front. Fly back to front? Whatever for? To keep the sun out of their eyes. Oh, well, by the way, Mother, I got a letter for you, or rather half a letter. Texas had the other half for breakfast. Oh, he's lucky. He's the only one that's eaten here yet. Now, what's happened to breakfast? It's Grandpa's turn. Oh, crikey. Stand by for stenters. If you wake up wishing you'd never been born... Dear Madam, we are very pleased to be able to tell you that we have obtained from our Austrian branch a Hungarian domestic. She will arrive on the 6.30 p.m. boat train at Victoria, the 7th inst. When is the 7th inst? Um, today is the 7th. Is it inst? Of course it is. Might be out. How could it be? Out was last month. So she's really coming. No more indigestion, no more midday pangs, and no more breakfast overcooked by Grandpa. Hip, hip, hooray! She looks a very nice girl. I hope she won't get lost in London. Nice girls often do. I'd better meet her myself. I'll go straight from the office. Well, you better take a look at that. You've got to recognize her on the platform. Yes, I'd, uh, I'd better get an eyeful. Oh. I say, I've just remembered I have a meeting in the office up until 6.30 tonight. That puts me out. <clears throat> Oh, what a nuisance, Aubrey. Do stockbrokers really work as late as that? And sometimes, worse luck. Stock taking, Mother darling. Checking all the stock they haven't broken. Um, you can meet her, Basil. Not me? All right. <laughs> Miss Hungry of 1910. Sorry, Father, I shan't have time. Oh, yes, you will. You leave your office sixish, don't you? Not sixish, Father. Six. Very well, you can meet her. We'll have supper later. Eightish? No, eight. Morning, Marjorie. Morning, dear. Morning, Aubrey. Now I know why people talk about the servant problem. Take a look at that, Julie. When you get your own house, you'll know just what it means to have a maid, whatever she looks like. When we get our own house. Oh, Grimes is still working on the foundations. Well, that's something. Yes, but when's he going to finish it? That depends on when he's going to start it. Some place on fire or something. There. A little overcooked. Now, tell me. 
Uh, what do you think of this? Do you want me to tell you, Grandfather? No. If you wake up wishing you'd never been born, ask your grocer for wheat corn. See, it's nearly right. Wheat corn born on. Oh, wait, horn. If you wake up hearing the hunting horn, ask your grocer for wheat corn. How's that? Well, he wouldn't have it hunting with it, would he? Oh, I don't know. He might you know a sort of sandwich form. These are positively the last kippers to be cremated in this house. Oh. Well, do the fishermen struck? No, we have. Oh. You won't have to now we've got a maid. Oh, good. I wonder if she's any good at slogans. 8.43. Mm. Nice filling breakfast, anyway. Now, Basil, don't forget about the maid. <laughs> I must dash. What, are you in the fire brigade, too? She would be if they asked her to. Funny sort of weather. I, I think I shall take my umbrella. Darling, you've taken your umbrella every day for 20 years. Well, it's been funny sort of weather for 20 years, that's why. Usual train tonight? Uh, yes, dear, yes. I thought you said you'd be late at the office. Uh, no, dear, no. That was last night. Aubrey. <laughs> goodbye, dear, goodbye. What is it, dear? Soft sugar. There's no soft sugar. I have to have my elevens at 10 when I get to the office. Never mind, darling. It's my turn to cook breakfast tomorrow. I say, there's old Grimes' car. He must have struck oil. If we're not in our own house by Christmas, I'll go mad. Well, if we aren't in by Christmas, we'll freeze to death. It's not funny, Basil. I leave you if we have to live with your family much longer. They're very sweet, but one can have too much of a good thing. And one of you's enough. Yes, well, nobody can pretend we're going to get in tomorrow. The top of sir. Morning, Mr. Basil. Morning, Mrs. Topham. Topham of the morning to you, Mr. Grimes. <laughs> Finished by Christmas? No, I hope, Mr. Basil. Ask him when. Yeah. When? No telling, Mr. Basil. There's no telling, darling. What I always say is, you can't make bricks without straw. <laughs> no, I suppose not. And there's the timber. As I was saying to Mrs. Grimes last night, they don't seem able to see the wood for the tree. Don't they? Then there's the fixtures. Yeah? Uh, you can get hold of the baths, like, but you don't seem able to get hold of the taps. Really? Funny thing, though, last year you could get hold of the taps, but you couldn't get hold of the baths. Well, well, well. Still, things are looking up. It's better to have a bath without taps and taps without a bath. Stop so damp, eh, Mr. Grimes? Cheer up, though. It's a step in the right direction. Eh, Julie? She works in the library. Pretty strict there, you know. Rather like it to be punctual. Then there's the labour. Yes, I see it. As I always say, Rome wasn't built in a day. No, but I bet it was finished by Christmas. Well, I'm just beginning along. Yes, so you don't want to be late at the office. Oh, any time does for me. I'm my own master, you know. Sorry, darling. Can't stop now. Oh, you're just about to. Mrs. Topham? Oh, yes, they're the ones. Thank you, Ethel. Husbands galore. Oh, that was a lovely book. Mm. Oh, Ethel, why do we ever get married? Men are the end. Oh, I think they're lovely. I do, really. Honest, I do. Well, you try living with three. Oh, what a thing to say, Mrs. Topham. Not three. You can't train a husband in the middle of his family. It's bad for discipline. I tell you, if I have to live with them all much longer, I'll, I'll run amok. You'd never. I will. I'll put old Topham in the coal cellar, middle Topham in the dog kennel, and young Topham... Where shall I put Basil? I don't know, I'm sure. 
Neither do I. Now, look here, Mrs. Topham. You shouldn't take arms so. Perhaps your husband needs a hobby. Now, take my bird. As soon as he leaves the railway, off he goes with his gun and gets a nice bird for the table. Oh, does he? Where does he shoot them? I don't know, I'm sure. Ask no questions, hear no lies. That's what I always say. <laughs> Good morning. <gasps> Good morning, Miss Honeycraft. Have you a copy of the history of the Dunmow Flitch? Uh... We had one at the vicarage, and my brother simply cannot find it anywhere. Ah, thank you. My brother and I just want to refresh our memories before the meeting. Oh, yes, I believe Basil's mother's going, too. I'm sure she is. But we old war horses still pull our weight, you know. Well, I must be running along. The meeting's starting any minute now. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Honeycraft. She gives me the needle. She does really. Oh, Ethel. That'll be all right with the inspector if it's all right with Colonel Hobbs. Uh, it's agreed that we ask Colonel Hobbs for the use of the ground as usual. Right, then that's settled. Now, uh, may we have a few words with the vicar? Certainly, Mr. Chairman. I think, first of all, we should remind ourselves of the essence of this ancient custom. I quote, he that repents him not of his marriage in a year and a day, either sleeping or waking, may lawfully go to Dunmo and fetch a gammon of bacon. I'd like to see him try these days. He'd get six months. A good point. I have it covered, though. The Ministry of Food informs me that the bacon is on its way from New Zealand. Oh, that's splendid. Now, marriages, when all is said and done, are made in heaven. And I... Thank you, Vicar. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now that Mr. Anacroft has said all he has to say, let's get on with the doing. That's right. Sergeant Mann, when it arrives, you'll take it into safe custody at the police station. Oh, no. Custom dictates that it should be kept at the vicarage. And common sense dictates it should be kept at the police station. Are you suggesting that we are not to be trusted with the care oh, of the... Of course not, Miss Honeycroft. I'm sure our chairman was only trying to save you any inconvenience. Very well, then, Vicar. But you'll be responsible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems we've got a flitch. All we need now is a judge, a counsel for the claimants, and a counsel for the bacon. Oh, if I may say so, I think we ought to appoint them now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, any suggestions? I propose Mr. Grimes for the judge. Yeah, here, 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 here. Unanimous. Well, I'll do my best. I should be quite willing to be counsel for the bacon. Agreed. 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 And as counsel for the claimants, I propose a lady whom we all respect and admire. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm afraid I, I couldn't cope, but I'm sure my husband would love to do it. Good. Unanimous. What about the couples? They are the most important, aren't they? This year, none has come forward. It's most disturbing. Uh, I doubt there's many as qualified, Vicar. Come on, there's no need to indulge in cynicism. All they need is a lead. Surely it should be easy enough to find one couple. Well, if Mrs. Topham thinks it's so easy, I put it to the vote that Mrs. Topham be given the privilege of finding one. Yes, indeed. Only yesterday, Rosabel was saying that these days you bestrode the narrow Dunmo world like a colossus. <laughs> Speaking socially, of course. Uh, I second that. Agreed. They're open. Right. And I declare this meeting closed. <laughs> I think that's uh, yes, they are. Yeah, I mean... for you. What? How are you? I say. 
The agency has told me that there would be a meeting. Good old agency. Then it's you I'm looking for. Right, uh, yeah. Are you the man from Hungary? <laughs> you didn't think to see me here? Well, yes and uh, no. We do not stay here, do we? Oh, rather not, no. It's far too noisy. Uh, you, you must be hungry. Oh, I am ravished. Well, now, uh, hold on. <laughs> What do you mean she's ravished? You know, Mother, she's famished, hungry, peckish. She needs building up. A little. Hello. Hello. Let's go and eat. Yes. I think we can probably get a table uh, in here. Uh, in Budapest, we have the Ritz. Do you have one here? Would you please look after the porter? Uh, where to, sir? Uh, the Ritz. It wasn't a very good photograph you sent from Hungary. I suppose all the photographs out there are mass-produced, what? <laughs> it was not I. No, say it wasn't. It was my maid. Your maid? I could not get a job in England when I used to send my photograph. You couldn't? That's funny. I just thought the people would have snapped you up. That is what the wives thought. There are husbands, you know. So I sent that. So you have a maid? Uh, in Budapest, just one. But in the country, more. Yes, up till 1939, we had... Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen? By Jove, a rugged team. Uh, uh, please. Yeah, no, don't worry. You were saying that in the, uh, in the country? Uh, yes, at my schloss. What do you want? At my castle. Oh, my castle, yes. That was my home. Home? Uh, Yes, uh, waiter. Do you have a schloss? No, not a schloss, but just a home. Uh, waiter. Oh, do sit down, dear. Look, Marjorie, it doesn't take three hours to eat a sandwich at Victoria. They must have had an accident. We ought to ring the police. I thought it was usually the other way around, with the police ringing us up. Much cheaper if they do. Oh, you're all so beastly. Basil's never been as late as this before. Perhaps you've quarreled. We haven't? At least not much, only a little around the house. What can they be doing? Don't worry, Julie. I expect they're making a meal of it. In Hungary, they probably suffer from the lack of fats. Sounds just the sort of place for you, my dear. Now, don't be ridiculous, Aubrey. There's all the difference in the world between dieting and not eating enough. Not to the casual observer, old girl. had a pleasant journey. Please? Would you like to see your room? Please. Uh, you must be very hungry. We have left some soup and salad in the kitchen. Oh, no. We have already dined. You've dined? Well, if you can call it that. What else would you like to call it? We have dined at Ritz. It was so kind of Mr. Basil. Or, uh, should I call him Master Basil? No, we gave that up some weeks ago. Uh, uh, do come and see your room, please. <laughs> well, here we are. Mrs. Topham. I understand English. Oh, <laughs> it's small, of course, but then I always like small rooms. <clears throat> Please, do not let me take it from you, then. Oh, no, no, I, I have another one. Uh, my husband takes up so much room. <laughs> oh, dear Nellie, she was very happy here for 20 years, until she joined the ATS. Then she became a little strange. How funny. Nellie must have fought against you, so to speak. Oh, dear, what a small world it is. <laughs> well, that's the room. It is not pretty, no, but it is clean. It will be beautiful. 
Oh, I love beauty. I must have beauty around me. Without beauty, life is nothing, as we say in Hungary. Oh, do we? Uh, do you? <laughs> well, I, I hope you will be comfortable. The house is quite labour-saving, but it was too much for me to cope with alone. Of course, my husband and son did their best, but men are so useless, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, here is the daily programme. Uh, first thing, the kitchen boiler. It's simple enough to clean and never gives a moment's trouble. Now, you, you see what I mean? The main thing is to keep this thing sort of... Uh, sort of... Uh, uh, <laughs> good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> I was just showing her how. Good idea. Well, don't just stand there gawking. If you want to help, go and get some coke. Now, with regard to this gas poker... Uh, what happened? Hello, Mother. Yeah. Don't you have these things in Hungary? No. Really? Well, we can't get on without them here. I've just heard a talk, a talk on mangle wurzels by Mr. <laughs> by Mr. Jack Blackman. Oh. Oh, there you are, darling. She's never seen anything like this before. Neither have I. Well, that really was something. Do you know how I stood Nellie's cooking for 20 years, I don't know. I must have a cast-iron stomach. You probably have, Father. It's not only the cooking, my boy. Food isn't everything, it's the whole caboodle. Look at the house, it looks wonderful. Do you know she even polished the silver band around my umbrella handle this morning? The, the initials stood out wonderfully. S.T. I thought your name was Aubrey. I found it in an underground in 1929. You ought to give it back to the lost property office. Hardly worth it, the fellow would have given up looking for it by now. As for my shoes. Pinching? No, shining. Shining like the sun on a car windscreen on the downs in August. Steady on, Father. <sighs> Wonderful. You know you're a very lucky woman, Marjorie. I'm not so sure. It makes it very difficult to diet. I've got six more pounds to lose before August bank holiday. In my days we kept our skeletons in the cupboard. Now they're all over the house. Well, I must be going. It's the drama group tonight. Why don't you come, Marjorie? Julie, you know Mother resigned the year Honeycroft asked her to play Falstaff. Do you mind if I come along instead? Oh, really, Basil? The vicar told me you were quite rude to him the other day when he asked you to join. Yes, as a matter of fact, I've had a bit of conscience about that, so I thought I'd uh, go along tonight and uh, put things right. How nice of you, dear Basil. Oh, it's nothing at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I thought I'd make it up to the vicar in a big way. Uh, so I persuaded Martha to join. Uh, she's very keen on acting. I quite agree. She never stops. I thought we ought to go on tonight and, and show her the way to the hall, as it's her first night off. You could draw her a map. Apparently they're crazy on acting in Hungary. It's sort of second nature to them. Instead of bridge or bebop, they just clap on the old grease paint and tear off a play. You seem to have been raising the Iron Curtain in a big way. Uh, broadens the mind, you know. What do they know of England, who only England knows? No? You're wasted on the stock exchange. What is the matter, dears? You're always bickering. I'm sure the food must be too rich. Game every day. I can't think where she gets it from. You're quite right, my dear. I have dreadful indigestion. I, I think I'll take a walk. I'll stroll along with them. 
I shall have a chat with the vicar. I, uh, I haven't seen him for years. He's a nice fellow. People must be nice to him, you know. They're not nice enough to vicars, really. <laughs> How beautiful they are. They're yours too now, you know. <coughs> Sorry, darling. How strange it is to think those stars are shining down on Hungary. They may not be. It may be cloudy there. Oh, it must not be. I like to think the stars are shining down upon the villages, upon my schloss. Uh, that's the star of Venus there, low down. Maybe she has been naughty and she has fallen down. <laughs> nice thought, eh? Ah, Vicar, how are you? Ah, Julius, have you persuaded Basil to attend at last? Oh, yes, Julius, most persuasive. And Mr. Topham, too. Don't tell me you persuaded him to attend as well. Yes, anything to help. That's what I like to hear, enthusiasm. You know, I believe you'd play Hamlet if you thought it would help. Well, I'd have a crack at it. <laughs> or Romeo. <laughs> And who is this? Ah, yes, yes, Oh, he yes, said that this yes, is Marta. Yes. She's from Hungary, our help. She helps us all along. From Hungary? Oh, poor child, poor innocent child. We will protect you here. In England, one need have no fear. Uh, Hedworth! <laughs> Excuse me. Nobody there? Must have been the moon. Leaving me all alone, I might have been murdered in my bed. Yes, but you weren't in your bed, my dear. You spend all day at the office and then come back here and go straight out again. I never see you. Yes, and when you do, you tell me I'm too fat. Oh, Aubrey, what do you want to go to the drama group for? You've never been before. Oh, well, I, I just thought I'd look in. I've, I've always been interested in the drama. How ridiculous at your age. What do you mean ridiculous? Oh, Aubrey, you're, you're making me unhappy. I believe I'm losing weight. That ought to make you happy. Yes, and then I'll put it on again. Well, I'll tell you why I went. I, I didn't want to worry you with it before, but I... I uh, went to keep an eye on Basil. An eye on Basil? Yes, if you ask me, he's paying too much attention to that little maid. Poor child. Poor lonely child. And another thing. I think it's disgusting the way Honeycroft's given her the lead right away. It took me a whole year of coming on asking who's for a game of tennis before I even had a small part. But darling, how would you like it if you were all alone in Hungary, taken by your kind employers to the local drama group in, in Bonsk? Where? Bonsk, southeast of Budapest. Wouldn't you expect the local vicar to give you a lead just to keep you cheerful? No, I wouldn't. Not unless I was... Well, not unless I was... Not unless you were what? Not unless I was good. But who says Martha isn't good? I'm sure she's good. I'm sure she's very good. <laughs> darling. Why, my pins? Think of the poor little girl. Almost a child, alone. Alone? Not for long, not her. Think of it, darling. A stranger in a strange land. Young, beautiful. A beautiful home she's had to leave behind. Darling, don't be jealous. Let her have a little bit of fun. It's not like you to be jealous, Julie. Oh, darling, the pin I, right uh, in my ear. Uh, oh. <laughs> Well, anyway, Mother's very pleased about Martha. Oh, Mother's pleased, is she? Here you are, a surprise. What's this? This is hot milk. Hot milk? But it is good for you. You must be thinking of someone else. I think you need the looking after. I had the looking after from my late wife for 50 years. I'm just beginning to get over it. You give that back to the cow in the morning. Oh. Aubrey, don't you think that we... Why don't you go to sleep, my dear? Well, I'm so worried about Basil. Oh, he'll keep until morning. I hope. Anyway, there's nothing wrong in liking a pretty face. Do you think she's very pretty? No, 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 my dear, but... Well, I'm older than Basil. Still, I, I must say she, 
She catches the eye. The flitch. It's not her fault. She's pretty, Marjorie. The flitch. I got it. The vicar wanted me to think of somebody to enter for the flitch trial. I'll enter Basil and Julie. For heaven's sake, why? You have to prove in public that you've had oh. domestic bliss for a year. Yes. That'll keep him out of trouble. Aubrey. Aubrey, are you asleep? No, my dear, no. I... I was just thinking of the flitch. Don't worry, dear. I'll tell the vicar at the square dancing tomorrow night. Square dancing? That's all I need. Oh. Now circle six like you always do. Keep that basket the legs don't do. Pick them up and circle eight. Hurry up, Grandma, you've been late. Our little refugee. Oh, everybody is so kind to me. Oh, a wonderful girl, Vicar, a wonderful girl. It's a pleasure to sit down to meals now, Vicar. Oh, oh, you're so kind. It's so lovely here. So happy in your country. It's, it's all so, so beautiful. I, I sometimes, sometimes wish to cry. Of course, things are so different for me now. I would be so excited on this day at home. Why especially today? Because it's my birthday, Father. I say, really? What a coincidence. Many happy returns of the day. Please? May you have very many more happy birthdays. I'll, I'll bet you... you... I bet you haven't had many yet. I shall never forget my 21st birthday. It was wonderful. On this day, our people came from all over the estate. They brought me presents fruit and flowers and vegetables. Simple things you understand, but very touching. The good father Kenyinsky would bring me those whom he deemed worthy of our charity. And he would help me to distribute golden pieces from my treasury. And then, before lunch, a gallop over the steps with the captain of my guard, a gallant soldier, and a perfect gentleman. He would have died for me. He was an autocrat, but not unkind. We would 
boat ride across the unknown plain to a lonely spot beneath a tree. There I would take a glass of golden wine, protected from the bandits by the captain of my guard. some mustard on it? <laughs> no, thank you, dear. And then at night, my birthday party. The wild throbbing of the balalaikas. Wine and laughter. By my side, the young Count Slavak, whose estate was next to mine, 200 miles away. going to make this announcement or are you not? The dance is nearly over. And in the good old days we danced till five. And then they galloped through the steps till dawn. <laughs> A very fine little girl, Rosabelle. Generous and charitable. It was. Oh, yes, attention, please. I'd just like to remind you all that next week, on the same day as the Flitch trial and the annual fair and circus, we have our church bazaar. I do hope you'll all collect what you can for my sister's white elephant stall. Yes, dear, all the stuff you bought from it last year. Just bring them along to the vicarage and my sister will tell you what to do with them. Once again, the bishop will grace the occasion with his presence, so all hands to the pump and maximum effort, everybody. Bring the fair to the fair. <laughs> and now I have great pleasure in announcing that the couple entering for this year's Flitch trial are our popular young marrieds, Basil and Julie Topham. On with the dance, the Kokomo Wheel. Honor your partners. John. No, you did. Well, tonight's Mother's Night. I think it's scandalous. What is, my dear? Like mother, like son, that top of boy pushing himself forward. Mother. Basil, people are looking. I quite forgot to tell you, Basil. I'm so glad you aren't angry. Uh, would you be angry if I entered you to swim the channel? That would be silly. I can't swim. Well, I can't flitch. How could you, without even telling us? It wasn't me. You top of men are all alike, weak as water. What is the good of trying to argue with Marjorie? <laughs> Yes, well, they flitch without us for 200 years, and they can flitch without us for another 200. They can't. You're the only entrance. Father, you keep out of this. I won't go through with it. You must. 
If you refuse, the whole village will assume that you and Julie don't get on. But would you do it? That's not the point. Well, would you, Father? You tell me to keep out of this. Of course your father would. He's going to be your counsel. What? You see, aggression always spreads if you're weak. Yes, well, I'm not playing. But, Basil, you must. The posters will be printed tomorrow. Mr. Grimes has arranged it all. Oh, has he? Yes, well, I'll go and stop him, then. Basil, no. You'll be silly. He'll be having supper now. Yes, and I know what he's having, too. Oh, Mr. Grimes, what a thirst. Oh, Mr. Grimes, excuse me, please. I'd like a word with you. I know, I know, I know. We've been slow, but I'm setting the boys on overtime next week. Well, I've got the bricks you wanted to. Come down in the morning and choose. Bring the missus. I'd like you to have the colour you want. Well, that's very kind of you. I oh, don't mention it. By the moment I heard, I said, well, there's a couple I'd like to work for. It'd be a pleasure to build a house for a couple who are unselfish enough to want to set our young people an example. Yeah, yeah. They sound all right. Who's the couple? <laughs> Just you tell me a little joke. I was only saying to Mrs. Grimes, there's a couple that deserve to win the flitch. You did? Yes. Hey, it's nice to think I'm building a house for the winner of the flitch. I says, I'll give them overtime. I mean, if you're serving the community, it's up to the community to serve you. Mr. Basil. If you win that flitch, I'll have you in your house by Christmas. You will? I say, have another. No, no, don't worry about me. Emmy, two double scotches, please. If you ask me, it's plain disgraceful. You should have to come forward because the locals are too lapsadaisical. If you ask me, Mrs. Jenkins, I think it's utterly disgraceful that our local couples, just because of their natural diffidence, should be shouldered aside by these newcomers from the town. Well, that's what I'm always saying to my bird. Indeed. Well, I feel that you should enter for the flitch and keep the flag of Dunmo flying. That's what I feel. I'm always telling Bert that's what I feel. Then in that case, I'm sure you will allow me to put down your names. Oh, what a scream. Steady, <laughs> Ethel. Uh, Miss Honeycroft, much as I'd like to, but it's not as if it's just Bert Jenkins being entered. That'll be all right. But now I'm nationalised, you'd be entering the British Railway, so to speak. Well, I'm sure they'd appreciate the flitch. The passengers would anyway. Here, <laughs> yeah, easy, Ethel, easy. Uh, Miss Honeycroft, I hate to let you down. I'm sure you do. I knew you were a sport. Good night. Miss Honeycroft. But my dear lady, if he refuses, what are we to do? Well, you must talk to him. Well, I most certainly will. I mean, after all, the bacon's here. Where is Basil? Oh, Basil, where on earth have you been? Arranging things with Grimes. You want to be in by Christmas, don't you? Oh, Basil, I've just been telling your family about the bacon. It's arrived in England. Three cheers. No, no, please, Basil. Please, just for me. Well, please. you lost the choir, boy. Do you want me to join up? No, no, no. The flitch. Please do not sabotage the flitch. What, me sabotage the flitch? I like that. What, me, Vicar? Why, well, I think the whole thing's a wow. Oh, I am so glad. Uh, your mother gave me the impression that you weren't going through with it. Rubbish, balderdash, nonsense. Basil. Well, this isn't true. Are you all right? Yes, I'm just a little tired, that's all. Are you sure that's all? Of course it's all. I don't know what you're talking about. I say, you look just like my little wife, Jury. Good gracious you are, my little wife, Jury. Everything's splendid, terrific, wonderful, absolutely fine. Oh, this is grand. I wonder, would you mind collecting the flitch from the station and bringing it to the vicarage tomorrow? Of course I will, rather. Have a big drinker. <laughs> Have a big... Did you hear that? Very funny. Have a drink, vicar. Rosabelle will be delighted when she hears. She takes the ceremony very seriously, you know. Good. A face. A face at the window. I saw a face. Nobody. That face again. Was it dark, sinister, and foreign-looking? It was indeed. Almost like an Irishman. Oh. We must phone the police at once. Pass, look up the number of the police for Mr. Honeycroft. I can manage under P. Charles, that leaves you double top. Hello? Yes, I know. Who? OK. Police, you're wanted on the blower, Sergeant Mark. Oh, me? I'm off duty. What about my five-day week? 
Good. Thank you. The sergeant says he'll be over at once. Sergeant Mahon, that's a fat lot of good. Why do you say that? He's probably tired. Been on the job all day. A fellow will be in the next county by the time he gets here. Bicarbonate, filthy. I'll tell you what, Vicar. You and I handle this. You take the front, I'll take the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nem, nem, man, yell. What'd you let you do? Oh, gosh, Ramarto. Don't worry, Mother, we'll fix it. Come on, Vicar. Dear Abyss of Alamarto. Nem, 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 oh, God. The Sarah Clack, Sarah Clack. Ida. Hello. I just thought I'd warn you, there's a funny-looking character hanging around the house. Nothing to worry about. If you see anything suspicious, just uh, hop in the cupboard, you know? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Omar, ide. Anything wrong, Martha? Oh, no, I don't think so, Mr. Topham. Hold your horses, I'll come and look. Come on, Texas. <laughs> It's me, a fool! Please! Come on, Julie, let's wait upstairs. Good evening, Mrs. Topham. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Topham. Have you seen a piece of paper with a poem on it about Wheatacorn? Wheatacorn? I don't know. If you're looking for a drink, it's only a waste of time. There's never any booze in this house. <laughs> you know, if you use an old cutthroat razor like I do, you wouldn't mess your face up like that. <laughs> Goodbye. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <gasps> Lovely day. Lovely weather. Lovely green gauge jam. Did you make it, Marjorie? No, Martha did. Wonderful. It's green gauge jam. I said green gauge, didn't I? How's Charlie's arm getting along? Must you be funny in the morning, Grandpa? Well, tonight's the address of house, isn't it? No, it's Saturday, and it isn't Charlie's aunt. It's Miss Honeycroft's epic when the Vikings came to Dunmo. <laughs> They'll be the only people who will come to it. <laughs> is uh, Basil in it? Basil is a Viking. I didn't know he was a member. He and Marta joined the same evening. What is she, a Viconess? She's the leading lady, and I'm her understudy. Oh, congratulations, my dear. Oh, Grandpa. No, I haven't finished it. I'm sorry. A Viking, that sounds serious. Just a ticket, isn't it? It's very smart, sir. Very. I think I have my bowler fitted with them. Very useful in the rush, huh? If you take the flitch, I'll bring the act. Wouldn't mind having a go for this myself. Well, why don't you? Disqualified. Oh, bad luck. Flying bomb? No, flying saucer. Teacup as well. on the vicar and then home. Yes, sir. I got your costume in the back. Oh, I cannot wait to put it on. I bet it's lovely. Mm, I hope it is. I wonder it was a plunging neckline and a bodice that would fit me so. I'm sure you'll look lovely in it. Thank you, sir. What color did you ask for? 
I hope it is black. My favorite color. It's so colorful. Stop! Stop! A two-colored horse, that is an omen. In my country, we always close our eyes and wish before we see its tail. Quickly now, before it passes. Did your wish come true? No, no. The fit shall be disqualified. Oh, no. A flinch! Good afternoon. Have you broken down? Yes, in a way. Can I be of any assistance? No, no, it's her ignition. It's a bit too far advanced, I think. I can handle it. I hope so. Did you get the flitch? Yes, yes, rather. Oh, how kind. Just put it inside the back door, will you? I'll put it in the larder when I get back from the vestry meeting. Goodbye. Goodbye. They saw us. Oh, no, they didn't. Well, if they did, I'm ready for it. Disqualified. No bacon, no house, and possibly no wife. Well, I'll tell them that it is an old Hungarian custom. Well, the trouble is, she's not an old Hungarian. You really think they didn't see? I don't think so. The flitch. The flitch, it's gone. It must have fallen out. Oh. Are you sure you haven't seen it? I told you no. What are you going to do? Thank you. Find another. Here! Where are you going with that? Oh, hello. Lovely afternoon. You know Martha, don't you? Afternoon, miss. Poor little fellow. We ran over him in the car. I think he sprained his ankle. Looks all right to me. Yes, that's because he's very brave. And I really think I ought to take him to the hospital, uh, to the vet. Looks all right. Let's see if he can run. Put him down, then. Poor little fella. Let him go, then. Let him go. <laughs> huh. There you are. See, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Not at all. Now I must be after rehearsal. Good oh. afternoon. The rehearsal. My goodness me, the, the rehearsal. No, no, Basil, no, no. You're meant to drink out of that, not blow. There's nothing in it. There will be, on the night. Cold tea. Now, try again. <laughs> What's the matter? I got the giggles. I was just thinking what would happen if there was a tea in it and I blew down it. <laughs> Give me a moment and I'll laugh it off. Now, come along. Be dignified, you warriors. A little left, the second Viking. No, left, not right. That's right. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. That isn't right. Move left. Where does she want me, ma'am? Right there, sir. If you don't know the way, ask a policeman. Thank you. Do uh, you see? Kept a nice peasant, Mr. Topham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I could do with a pig or, or half a pig. Half a pig? Yeah. That's difficult. You're telling me. All right. I'll see what I can do. It'll come dear, though. Now then, off we go. Basil, one, two, three. Begin. Full many a moons have waned, I trow, since first we set sail from... Uh, uh, from famed Dunmo. Now, what do you think of this, my dear? We will look forward to every morn if you start your breakfast with wheat corn. How's that, my dear? Oh, awful. No, no, it's rather good. It flows. The first prize is a sewing machine or a mowing machine, both useful in their own way, do you know? Really, Grandpa, it's bad enough having the house full of the drama group in ten minutes. Yeah, but you do too much, my dear. I wonder where I get it from. Your mother. She was as restless as a cricket. I don't know why they call them that. I should have thought anything to do with the cricket was restful, wouldn't you? Yes, Grandpa. Now, listen to this, dear. If the maid is singing at the break of dawn, it means she's been guzzling wheat Is that any good? Uh, what, Grandpa? Marjorie, do you want a washing machine or not? 
Uh, no, thank you, Father. I use a sponge. Good night. Good night. Yes. Miss Martha. I've got a present for you. Oh, no, Mr. Jenkins, not again. Yeah. I happen to notice these coming along tonight. You should not shoot them. You'll get in trouble. Oh, go on. Stick it in your bag. <laughs> yeah. I'd shoot anything for you, Miss Martha. Lions, tigers, elephants. Oh, oh, Mr. Jenkins! Would you please stop this? Mr. Jenkins, I don't... Mr. Jenkins, oh. if you're not too busy, I'd like to close the hall. Yeah. And, Mr. Jenkins, I take it that after this you'll be withdrawing from the trial? Oh, thank you, Mr. Grimes. Where are the rest of you? The terrible news, it's gone. Gone? It's gone. What's gone? The flitch. The what? The damn no flitch. The flitch of bacon. It's gone. There's no trace of it. What was it like? You might have asked us round. Exactly. That's what everyone will say. The next thing, Hedworth will be summoned by the Ministry of Food. Oh, dear, I shall probably lose my cloth. Why, had you wrapped it in a cloth? I'm sure it will turn up. Have you reported it? No, no, not yet. Well, if you'd like to do so now, please use the telephone. No, no, thank you. See, Grimes wanted me to keep it at the police station for safety, and I refused. I was insistent that we kept it at the vicarage. When did you find that it was missing? After the rehearsal, Hedworth was so tired, we went home for a glass of milk. The flitch had disappeared. We've searched for it everywhere, high and low, but there's no trace of it. Well, there it is. But who could have stolen it? I don't know. I haven't the faintest idea. Perhaps the fairground people. I think not. I've always found them comparatively honest. It's terrible. I don't know what to do. We've got to save your bacon somehow, Vicar. <laughs> Please don't say anything to anybody about this, will you? No, of course not. You may rely on me. You won't say anything to anybody, will you? Rather not. It must be found. Oh, don't worry. I'll tell everyone I see to keep an eye out for it. No. Vicar, don't tell him. I'll get you another one. Where from? Don't worry. Leave it to me. Where did you put the flinch, exactly? Uh, well, you remember you told me to, to put it just inside the back door. Good evening, Sergeant. Oh, Good evening. Mr. Grimes, you'll know Miss Honeycroft, don't you? Miss Honeycroft? I've struck the Jenkins off. What are you talking about, Mr. Grimes? The flitch. You saw it. I should say I did. Where? In the village hall. Is it still there? Well, if by it you mean her. No, it's not. It's here. No, thank you. What are you talking about, Mr. Grimes? Jenkins, kissing her against her will. Oh, never mind that. It's quite unimportant. Oh, where is Hedworth? Unimportant? Well, I'll be blown. Hey, Mr. Grimes, would you like a drink? Thanks, I will. Have one of these, too. Thanks. Well, here's to you, winner of the Dunmo Fritch. <laughs> well, you're bound to win it now. You're the only entrant left. What about the Jenkins pair? Disqualified. You'd never believe it. I caught him red-handed. Kissing your maid. Thank you. Ah, good evening. Fed up waiting for a drink. I don't uh, blame you. Well, how the rehearsals go? Oh, thank you very much. I shoved those but in the no, water once. Hang on to that, will you? I may not think Sherlock Holmes, but there's no... Oh, Lord, the local police... Police! Please do not call this police. Oh, rather not. He's such a bore, he stops the traffic with his conversation. I wish to talk to Martha, please. <laughs> That's a much better idea. Please let me talk to her. Well, I'm not stopping you. If you want to talk to Martha, talk to her. Every other man does. So that is the trouble. Always there are these other men. She told me I had no possessions, no ambition, no nothing. But now I have a farm in Austria. If she would come with me, we would be very happy on my farm. But no, these men. You're not a Dunmo man. No? I'm Istvan. I'm from Hungary. Hungary? Oh, most interesting. Did you ever run across Marta there? You ought to have a word with her. For two years, we were betrothed at the big schloss where I was working on the farm. Hold on to those. Oh, a schloss is, how you say, a castle? Oh, yes, we got a lot of them here. There's Windsor Schloss and the Elephant and Schloss. Well, then, at the big schloss, she was the kitchen maid. But would she marry me? Well, it's extraordinary that you should ask me that. I was just going to ask you. She would not marry me. Oh, that's a pity. Her father beat her seven times. Seven. But it was no good she left. I followed her. I love her. And her cooking, it is wonderful. 
Her whole life's left. I dream about it. Uh, lots of people do around here. So I find where Marta is, and so I get a job. With the circus, I come here. Well, that is most enterprising. Oh, I have arranged a feast for Marta in my friend's caravan. He has a, a how you say, a, a flitch of bacon. Really, yes. There seems to be a lot of them around here. Excuse me. <laughs> I go to seek her in the kitchen, eh? You go and seek her in the kitchen. I very much doubt whether you'll find her in the kitchen. <laughs> 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 No, thank you. I didn't get it, did you? Don't you think? Of course, I think it is. The bishop should be told. Excuse me, Miss Honeycroft. The bishop should be told. Nonsense, Hickworth. If the flitch is lost, I shall see that the Topham's claim to it is lost, too. What do you mean, my dear? I shall give evidence about Basil in the car. My dear, you can't do that. Can't I? We'll see about that. Really, Aubrey ought to know better at his age. Why don't you tell her to come out of there? Get really mad. No, I never lose my temper, Judy. I don't want any scenes. Well, I'm not going to do another thing. I'm going to fetch Martin. Julie, you have been lucky getting a treasure like Martha. Yes. Whatever did you do before you found her? I used to get a drink at our own parties for a start. If I was the judge, I'd give the flitch to you. Oh, I'm not married. Yeah, I'd say to that. Ah, here's the lucky husband. And there's the lucky wife. Hello, darling. Hello, sweetheart. Lucky devils winning all that bacon. They haven't won it yet. But still, it's in the bag, Miss Honeycroft. So's the cat. Until somebody lets it out. Uh, does anybody feel like a stuffed egg? <laughs> Start, eh, Honeycott? Yes, indeed, Bishop. Excellent attendance. Oh, who blast stalls a good one this year? Crowded, isn't it? Oh, it's wonderful. And here is your prize. Men just like a change sometimes, that's all. Don't expect your garage. I suppose it's the way she rolls her arms that gets them. Where is it? Outside, second on the left behind the rhododendrons. No, no, no. The flitch. You promised it. Now, are you getting one or are you not? I don't know. But you said you would. Yes, but it'll take time. Time? There isn't any time. Be patient. Oh, patient? It'll need Job to be patient in these vile circumstances. Yes, but he's not here, so do the best you can. No, Basil, it won't do. A promise is a promise. And a flitch is a flitch, and there isn't one. Oh, dear. I'm so afraid Rosabel will insist on me calling her. No, call her anything you like, old chap. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, she'll insist on giving evidence. Oh, that's all right. She's got nothing on me. Well, she's got her eye on you, for one thing, and she has had for some time. Really? She never told me. She noticed something strange that afternoon your car broke down and we drove up. Her eyesight's a great deal better than mine. She can't do that. Well, needs must when the devil drives. What a very jumpy little man. It must be nerves. Oh, my dear, it's his sister. Oh. Poor Honeycroft. He'll never get preferment till he's shaken off that gorgon. Well, Hedwell? Has the flitch turned up? No, my dear. No, not yet. In that case, I shall give evidence. My dear, I hardly think a scandal. Nonsense, Hedworth. I refuse to allow you to be the laughing stock of the diocese and under the bishop's very nose. Yes, but to start a new scandal is not very charitable. Charity begins at home. But what good will it do? Well, really, you're not very quick. If they're disqualified, we shan't need a flitch. Use your head, Hedworth. Come along, children. She's going to say that she saw me Kissing, Marta. And, uh, were you? Father, don't keep asking awkward questions. You're my counsel. That's not the point. We must stop her giving evidence. How can we? Well, I don't know, but there must be some way of stopping her going into court. You know, I simply can't go through with it. Courage, my boy, courage. Remember, the Toppums were at Waterloo. Yes, well, I wish I were there now. The Dunmo Fitch, the Dunmo Fitch. Will the couple who are being tried come at once to the large marquee? 
Thank you. Yes, well, I'm going. Going where? Abroad. Can't somebody stop her? Don't you worry. I'll take care of Rouge Bell. Don't forget, the Toppums were at Waterloo. <laughs> Before this court consisting of a judge, a counsel for the baton, a counsel for the couple, and 12 good jurors and true, six good bachelors and six true spinsters, this trial commences. And now, it is my very great pleasure to take my seat as judge at the trial of this charming and connubial couple. <laughs> I will now call upon counsel for the claimants, Mr. Aubrey Topham, to open his case by examining his clients. Play for time. Eh? Play for time. I am playing for time. <coughs> um, you are the son of Mr. and Mrs. Aubrey Topham. I believe so. Would you mind answering yes or no? Would you? <laughs> And you reside at the house of Mr. and Mrs. Aubrey Topham? I do. By inclination or necessity? Necessity. <laughs> now, am I right in saying that you, Basil Topham, residing in the grace and favor of your generous parents... Steady on, Father. <laughs> your generous parents married your present wife last year? That's right. And am I right in saying that from that day to this you have not quarreled with her more than in the normal give and take of married people? No. No, not more than that. Would you confirm that, Mrs. Topham? Well, we've, uh, we've neither of us been in hospital. <laughs> May I have a picture for the Herald, Miss Honeycloth? No, no. I've got an appointment. And these boys have made me late all It week. won't take long if you'll just sit here. Oh, uh, sit next uh, to me. Uh, now, watch for the birdie. Put your hands over the lens. You know it. Can you remember when and where you first met your wife? We were at school together. I remember that I was kept in one evening, and when I was let out, I found that Jewel had been waiting for me by the backyard gate, with a tadpole and a jam pot. <laughs> yes. Proceed. She asked me if I'd like it, and she said she was sorry I'd been kept in. And did you accept the offering? Took the tadpole, if that's what you mean. <laughs> where did you take it to? Back home. Put it in your bowler hat. And uh, what happened to it after that? He went up to London the following morning. I saw it off. Or rather on. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Topham, I find the question of the tadpoles is irrelevant. My lad. What has happened to this thing? Why doesn't it move? You there, make the thing go on. Have you finished your examination, Mr. Topham? <laughs> I'm afraid I have. Then I call on counsel for the bacon. I should like to open my case by calling a witness, Miss Rosabel Honeycroft. Miss Rosabel Honeycroft. Miss Rosabel Honeycroft. Miss Rosabel Honeycroft. I, I call for a postponement for this material witness. I protest. <laughs> I, I second that. The court will now adjourn for ten minutes. It's most extraordinary. Roosevelt seems to have vanished into thin air. Will you make this thing go on, please? I want to get out. It's stuck. We're working on it. How much for another half hour? You'll never get away with that. That's not a flitch. Oh, ain't it? No, it ain't. It's donkey. You show me the donkey that's got a flitch like that. I can't. That's right, you can't. I can't because it's dead. Look here. I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like your flitch either. I'm telling you, this flitch ain't donkey. Do you want to make something of it, eh? I'm afraid I couldn't even if I wanted to. Come and fork out, you promise me. Uh, hello, Sergeant Mann. <laughs> Have you won the thing? 
Now they've adjourned to find Miss Honeycroft. She, she's up there. I say, well done, Grandpa. Have you got it? No, it wasn't any good. It was donkey. Donkeys don't have flitches. Does that matter, Father? Well, not to me, to the donkey, possibly. Are you looking for a flitch? Yes, Grandpa. Well, Ishvan's got one. Who's Ishvan? You know Ishvan, don't you? He's always around the house. Who is Ishvan, Grandfather? Well, he's, he's in the circus. He's Marta's boyfriend. Marta's what? Boyfriend. Here, what am I to do with her? You carry on, Grandfather. You're doing fine. Same again. How much? Well, it's a bit dodgy, you know. Cost you another nicker. Marta, do you know a chap called Ishvan? Yes. Oh, he's not good. He has not got the ambition. Well, who cares about that as long as he's got a flitch? Where is he? In his caravan, perhaps. Well, where is his caravan? I do not know. Hey, look, come on. Oh. Attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The flitch trial will be resumed in five minutes. I say, what a lovely smell. I, I bet it's pig. It's her job. Oh. Uh, are there any more caravans no, around here? Only what you see. Oh, thank you. Oi, here. Yeah? There's Tiny's caravan. Always parks away. Been a light ass keeper. Thanks very much. Then may we come in? So you're the man who has stolen my girl. You know my son. What are you doing with my girl? What are you doing with my flesh? I'll kill you first and then her. Quick, father, come on. Excuse me, old chap. Istvan! Istvan! Marta, at last you're alone. Oh. Oh. Marta! Oh, no. So I said to the inspector, I may not be Sherlock Holmes, I said, but I do know when a donkey hasn't died naturally. Attention, attention, Mr. Topham, Mr. Basil Topham, please. The Flitch trial is recommencing. I don't care what you say. A deal's a deal and someone's got to pay. Well, I can't help it. I spent my last ten bob on him. Oh, you have, have you? Well, down she comes, then. Now, the condemned man at all to breakfast to bacon, eh? Did he? <laughs> Clever chap. So, why do you walk away with it? Because I thought I had. Any uh, side of Miss Honeycroft yet? I expect she'll be here any minute now. Oh, we'll have to manage with her, huh? You know, it's thirsty work, this. This thing. That's right. Now run along, you boys. Oh, this is an outrage. And I've been there all night. Have you got half a crown? Half a crown? Good you know, Lord. There you are. Now do your stuff. Oh, Sit down. Don't do that. All right, Bill. Take him up again. Second no. child. Blimey, I don't know. Your witness, Mr. Undercroft? I have no witness, my lord. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, your verdict. Marta, come back to Austria with me. I, I now have a farm and 100 pigs. Please, oh, Marta. The flitch! Innocent! I want the flitch! <laughs> the winners of the Dumbo flitch are Basil and Julie Topham at number four, New Road, Dumbo. Builder. Stanley Grimes. If he have the bacon, then I keep my mouth up. Which is it to be? It's fun! I now call upon counsel for the bacon to present the flitch. My lord, there is no... There is no couple to whom I would sooner present this much sought-after piece of bacon.
Ethel. I found this on the way down here. It's for you, love. Oh, that. I shall remember last year to my dying day. But as Hedworth always says, good comes out of evil. And if it hadn't been for those interfering Toppums, Hillary and I would never have won the flitch this year. Oh, listen to this, my dear. With wheat of corn is half bewitched, and you will win the Dunmo flitch. Oh, beautiful. Then one day you'll know. Just like Darby and George.